Hello everybody, my name is Chris Brady, author of the Boeing 737 Tech Guide and the Boeing 737 Tech Site. And this video is, um, deals with some frequently asked questions about technical aspects of Flight Alaska Airlines 1282. Uh, the questions I will be attempting to answer here are the following. Is it a plug type door? How is it held in place? What are the springs for? Identifying the plug option. Some comments on uh, or clarifications on flight deck door warnings, the pressurization system uh, warnings in the uh, lead up to the incident, and uh, flight, the flight deck door opening during the incident. As always, please treat your company training and their manuals as the authoritative source of information. So, my previous video on the, uh, the mid cabin exit door plug option. Um, raised a lot of additional questions um, about the door and some associated systems and I'm going to try and address those questions here with some new and um, hopefully helpful photographs. Now of course I didn't help matters myself by including an error in that video in which I said that the plug had to be pushed down to open, it actually has to be lifted up as um, many of you spotted and that error is also there in the, the maintenance manual system description section which will hopefully be rectified by, uh, by Boeing as well as me here. So first question, is it a plug type door? Um, I said it was in the, um, in the video and most of you said it doesn't look like one to me. Um, what I can say is that it's, it's actually written in the AMM uh, system description section that, that uh, the door plug is a plug type door. I'm on your side with this one. I, I personally don't think it is. Uh, I think I alluded to that in the previous videos. Um, but anyway, f for me, a plug type door is, is one that's usually wider on the inside than the outside, so that in simple terms it can't easily blow out under pressure. Um, I guess it, 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 it may depend on, on your, you know, exactly how you view it, but um, Boeing appear to say it is. Uh, unless, of course, that's another typo. Right, so how is it held in place? Um, again, this was a, um, something which obviously I, I, I didn't make clear or clear enough in the, in the previous video, so, so let's look in more detail at that. Let's first start with the stop fittings. There are 12 stop pins which are marked on this picture here. They are around the, the door plug and there are 12 corresponding stop pads around the door frame, which I haven't marked on here because the picture would be too busy, but you can see them in the picture. There are six each on the, the forward and aft edges of the door, so not at the top and the bottom, just on the, on the sides as we look at it in this picture. The pins are on the door plug and the pads are on the door frame. We need to remember that fact. This is a close-up of the stop pin which is on the on the door plug. The contact point with the pad is shown on the top and at the bottom of the photograph is the uh, locking wire for, for the length adjustment because they, they, these are adjustable. Uh, right, alignment. When the door plug closes, the pins are just above the pads, and this photograph hopefully shows that. Um, so the door is in the open position, and you can see that the pins are above the pads. This enables the, the pins to travel past the pads until they're lowered into position. When the door is closed, or plug door is closed, the, the plug door is pushed down against the springs as, as the roller pin travels up in, into the roller track, causing the pins to, to engage or be very close to the pads. As the aircraft pressurizes, the pins contact and push against the pads, taking the pressurization loads from the door plug to the door frame. And in the photo, you, you, you can see a close-up of a, of, a, of a pin making contact 
with with a pad. And again, re re remember that the pins are on the door, and the and the, the pads are on the on the frame. And there's there's another pair at the at the bottom of the photograph. Now near the top of the door, on on each side, is a guide track, and there's a corresponding roller pin on the door frame. Now, note that this is opposite to the, the, the four other passenger and service doors, doors one and two left and right, the overwing exit and the cargo doors, all of which have got the pins on the door and the tracks on the frame. So again, this, this could be a source of confusion as, as, as to what we're, we're actually looking at here. But to spell it out, the pins are on the frame and the tracks are on the door. When the door plug closes, the roller pin goes into the track and travels upwards. And by that, what actually happens is that the door plug moves downwards and sits, the, and, and, the, and the pin then sits at the top of the track. That locks the door plug closed. To open the door plug, an upward force is needed to lift the, 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 the guide tracks, which are on the door plug, off the guide pins, thereby moving the stop pins away from the stop pads, allowing the door to open. Now, securing the door. When the door plug is closed, it's locked in position by four bolts. Those bolts are there to prevent any vertical or outward movement of the door. Two bolts go through the upper guide track fittings and two go through the lower hinge bracket assemblies as shown on the, um, on the photograph here. The guide track locking bo bolts go th through the guide track holding the roller pin in position as you can see in the, in the lower diagram here. This prevents any vertical and outward movement of the door plug. And you can you can see the, the 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 locking bolt in this in this photograph here. So the upper guide fitting is on the on the plug. This is a curved track for the roller pin on the door frame to go into when the door is closed. Locking bolts are then inserted through the guide fitting to lock the roller pins in place in the closed position. And those locking bolts have got a castellated nut. Uh, nut and a, a cotter pin or a split pin, depending on your terminology, not locking wire as I called it previously, through them to prevent them from, from escaping. Now on the, the lower locking bolts, the, there are two vertical movement arrestor bolts on the hinges at the bottom of the, the, the mid-exit door plugs. As the name suggests, these bolts prevent the door plug from moving upwards, up the hinge tines, so that the, the, the stop pins and the pads can remain aligned and hold the, 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 the door plug in place. These locking nuts also, like, like the ones on the, on the guide tracks, have got castellated nuts and a, and a cotter or spit pin going through them to prevent them from escaping. What are the springs for? So they're called lift assist springs um, and they're on the hinges and they make sure that the, the door plug will not fall back to the closed position when pushed open. And they also help support the door plug during inspection, removal and, and installation. This photo shows a lift assist spring in the extender position um, without the vertical movement arrest the bolt because obviously if that bolt was in place it wouldn't be able to extend. Identifying the plug option. Again many people have asked about this. So the door plug is the only option with a full size passenger window. All of the other eight options I have either a, a standard door porthole or no window at all if deactivated. 
Notice also from the outside that the, the door when plugged doesn't have the external handle or pressure relief door because it's not designed to be open as emergency exit. It's only designed to be open by engineers um, for servicing and, and, and you know, uh, ventilation and, and, and perhaps for packing the aircraft dur during assembly. A word about the 900ER, because so far we've only spoken about the MAX 9. Now the, the door plug option is only available for the 900ER and the 9. The point here is it's also available for the 900ER. Now as far as I can tell, they're identical. But there may be differences that I'm not aware of. And the, the reason why I'm flagging up that there may be differences that I'm not aware of is, is because I cannot see why the FAA emergency AD only applies to the MAX 9 with the door plug option and not the 900ER with the door plug option. For me, from what I've been able to tell, they're the same. If they're the same, surely the emergency AD should apply to both. But it doesn't, and I, I don't know why that is. Flight deck door warnings. Again, people have, have, have asked about, you know, are these warnings, are there any warnings to, to the flight crew uh, about this door being loose or departing the aircraft? Well, the answer is that aircraft with the door plug option have got the, the proximity sensors removed. The, the left mid exit and right mid exit captions are deactivated and should have inox stickers over them as per this photo here. This means that there would have been no door warning in the flight deck before or during the event. pressurization system. So we know because the uh, the NTSB said so in the briefings that the the incident aircraft had three auto fail events in the weeks before the incident. What is not known is if this is in any way related to the event. So what does the auto fail light mean? From the FCOMs um, if the auto fail light illuminates, then it means that the automatic pressurization system uh, has, has detected a failure. There, there are two con uh, conditions or, or, or variations of this. It indicates a single controller failure when the alternate light, the, the, the green light there, is, is also illuminated. Because that what that's telling you is, is that the, 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 the the controller in use has failed and it's it's flipped ac across to the alternate system. If however the alternate light is not illuminated, it means that the alternate system isn't working and you've got a dual controller failure because both controllers must have, well one must have failed, tried to flip across to the other one, that also failed, so you've got the, the auto fail light on, on its own. I am not sure from the NTSB be briefing which of these scenarios occurred in the in the, the flights before the incident. What are the reasons for an auto fail light? Well, there are the maintenance manual lists seven reasons why the, the light could illuminate. Three of them are to do with pressurization uh, or, or, or the, the, the cabin uh, conditions and four of them are more sort of electronic or failures. So, first is that the cabin altitude rate of change is too high, so it exceeds 2,000 sea level feet per minute. And for those of you watching this who perhaps aren't in, a, in the industry, a typical cabin altitude rate of change is about 500 feet per minute. So it would have to be four times the normal rate of change of, of, of cabin altitude to get an auto fail. Or the cabin altitude is too high, and by that we mean 15,800 feet, which again, for the, 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 the normal maximum uh, is about 8,000. Um, you get a warning at 10,000, and the oxygen mass will drop at 14,000. So this is above all of those previous trig points. Or that the cabin differential pressure is too high, in excess of 8.75 psi. 
So those are con conditions where you could say that the control has been lost of the pressurisation. There are four other criteria. One is a power loss, wiring failures, outflow valve component failures, or cabin pressure controller failures. So again, we, we, we don't know the reason yet. But, um, I mean, perhaps Alaska Airlines, perhaps the NTSB already know. But it, it, as far as I'm aware, it's not been made public what the reason for the auto fail events were in the run up to this, this event. And as I say, it may not be related to what happened. But this is just answering questions which, which are arising from, from the information we've been given. And finally, the flight deck door opening. So, we, we know because the NTSB uh, told us that the flight deck door opened um, in, in, in the event. The flight deck door, not the decompression blowout panels, opened as a result of the depressurization. This appears to be an undocumented feature in either the FCOMS or the maintenance manual. What the maintenance manual says is that the door has blowout panel, panels installed that will open forwards in the event of a decompression of the, in, the, in the control cabin. Well, we didn't have a decompression in the control cabin. The decompression was actually in the cabin, not in the flight deck. So that's the second quote I'm, I'm giving here from the maintenance manual, which says, in the case of a rapid decompression in the cabin compartment, the, and I just inserted the word flight deck there to, to, to specify, the, the flight deck door is able to withstand the pressure difference due to the small area of the flight compartment. Well, either it wasn't able to withstand the pressure difference, or there is a feature which we don't know about, whereby the door will open in the event of a cabin de de depressurization. Uh, uh, again, th this is something that, that needs clarifying, and the, the chair of the NTSB um, said that Boeing would be clarifying this in the documentation going forward. That's it. Hopefully um, that's answered some of the, the questions arising from, uh, from the event and from my, my previous videos. As always, if you've enjoyed this video, found it useful, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.